Welcome to the forgotten history of Andrew Doherty and his Center Street playing card factory. Since this is the first video in this series, I suppose it's only fair to ask, who was Andrew Doherty? Andrew Doherty was an American playing card maker located in Lower Manhattan during the second half of the 19th century. He manufactured some of the most beautiful playing cards of his era and introduced many brands that would go on to become national favorites. Andrew Doherty was a captain of both industry and charity, and his endeavors would ultimately find him shaking hands with the President of the United States. Even today, people may be familiar with his most famous deck of cards, Tally Ho No. 9. They have been produced continuously for over 135 years, and are still made today by the United States Playing Card Company. Andrew Doherty was born in Londonderry, Ireland, in 1826. His family immigrated to the United States in 1834 and settled in Brooklyn, New York. Andrew began his working life at the age of 11 and took many jobs and learned numerous trades throughout his youth. He took a keen interest in the printing and stationery business and found himself with a sharp mind for engineering and machinery. It was during these early years that Destiny found Doherty when he was also introduced to the manufacture of playing cards while apprenticing for New York stationer David Felt. Felt, like other stationers and print jobbers, was also in the business of manufacturing playing cards on the side. In those days, the playing card industry was very small and only had a few dedicated manufacturers. In fact, it would take Andrew Doherty and a group of his peers to change that a few years later. Enough couldn't be said about Andrew's life in that window of time before he started making playing cards. Considering what an important figure he was, it might be hard to imagine that in a dramatic display of personality, 1841 saw him head out to sea and spend three years aboard a whaling vessel before returning to New York and entering the printing business for good. Like all aspiring young businessmen, Doherty needed somewhere to make his aspirations a reality. At first, he leased a small law space located at 48 Ann Street, where he employed a few friends to help him set up and print his first decks of playing cards. While enjoying modest but steady sales, Doherty honed his new art while making plans for the future. The future came in 1849 when Andrew moved to 78 Cliff Street and took on two business partners to secure the capital for his growing enterprise. The new company was named Cotri and Dordry, and together they produced cards under the label U.S. Card Manufactory. Although his reputation grew, the partnership did not, and by 1853, Doherty was again manufacturing on his own. Before long, and in need of more room to house his blossoming company, Doherty moved all of his operations to 26 Beekman Street in 1858. There he set about making the decks of cards that would ultimately make him famous. At this time, his only real competition was Samuel Hart, John J. Levy, and Lawrence and Cohen, a family of stationers and playing card makers. When the Civil War started in 1861, Doherty lobbied for higher taxes on playing cards to provide the government with much needed revenue. While Doherty's efforts would come at the expense of the other makers, it was a very successful idea and he was invited to Washington to meet with President Lincoln to explain the plan. An 1895 newspaper article about Doherty's retirement paid tribute to the events of that day. One can imagine the warmth of which the noble-hearted martyr to liberty shook hands with Andrew Doherty when the feasibility of the scheme was made clear. It was the imposition of a tax of five cents per pack of playing cards. This tax was a heavy financial loss for Andrew, but he had the president's gratitude which was expressed in the words, It's citizens like you, Mr. Doherty, who make the liberty of the United States indestructible. Doherty's early work shows why so many Americans loved his playing cards. From an artistic perspective, there wasn't much to compare them against. While other makers were still tethered to old styles and methods, Doherty would constantly push the boundaries of both technology and design. His operation grew to become the largest in the country, and the high quality of his playing cards became known across the world. In 1871, Andrew purchased three consecutive properties on Center Street and for over two years renovated the space to his exacting specifications. Then in 1874, he moved the playing card business to the new address. The factory was a massive seven stories located on the corner of Center and Worth, and at the time it was one of the most prominent structures visible. 80 Center Street was more than just a great exterior facade. In the basement was a 40 horsepower steam engine used to animate the machinery, and the seven floors above were serviced by state-of-the-art elevators. The factory floors were a perfect example of the second industrial revolution. 
They were filled with rows upon rows of standard presses, rotary presses, and other specialized equipment, most of which had been invented by Doherty himself. In fact, once Andrew made the move to Center Street, improvements to playing cards were being made constantly, and many types of innovations were coming to life, like his triplicates, indicators, and jokers. Although he struck gold constantly, and many of his decks were the height of popularity at the time, only one had the power to make it to the modern day. Doherty released his Tally Ho No. 9 playing cards in 1885, and they were first created and spent close to 20 years being made inside the walls of 80 Center Street. In 1895, as his factory continued to produce millions of decks every year, Andrew Doherty, the card man of New York, retired as one of the most well-known names in the country. With his three boys in charge of his life's work and no fear of the future, Andrew spent six years enjoying all the things that he loved most. He passed away on March 4, 1901, and his death was noted in many newspapers around the country. You may be wondering what happened to Andrew Doherty's playing card empire after he was gone. After operating independently for over 50 years, the business was sold to the United States Playing Card Company in 1906, and production was almost immediately wound down and transferred to other factories. The photographs in the following presentation shed light on the final days of Doherty's magnificent building. During the first part of the 20th century, subway construction in Lower Manhattan produced many incredible images of the area. These shots were taken by photographers paid by the city to document the work from 1907 to 1912. These rare images have been arranged in a short video to let you experience 80 Center Street like never before.
Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thanks for joining me today in learning about the forgotten history of Andrew Doherty and his Center Street playing card factory. There's a lot more to see and many more manufacturers to meet, but that'll have to wait for another time. For now, I'm Jason McKinstry from the World of Paper Empires. See you next time.